You're welcome back. There is this story that federal government has ignored a 17-year-old concession fee debt and is now renewing terminal leases. And to discuss this with me, I have Mr. Shegun uh, Shokpeton, principal partner, Woodridge and Scott Consulting, and a public affairs analyst who has joined us. Good morning and welcome to the program, Mr. Shokpeton. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Okay, let's start by understanding what it really means, the 17-year-old uh, concession debt that is being talked about and how the federal government has ignored it. Well, so um, what's happened basically is that at some point um, um, about 20 years ago, uh, the, the, the government of Nigeria decided that uh, this, a lot of the services that were being provided at the port um, would be... Um, concession to private uh, sector stakeholders mm. uh, who who are deemed to be experts um, in the area in the field of uh, port management um, and port management and logistics. Um, the idea being, you know, they would run it more efficiently, um, and as a result of the efficiency, uh, our um, uh, 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 Import, imports and export uh, um, facilitation services by the government uh, would improve significantly. And then as a result of their involvement as well, they would be able to maintain the facilities at the port um, to ensure that their businesses run smoothly. Again, the argument being that being private people, their, their primary objective of profit would be impaired if they do not um, invest money in those uh, things to ensure that um, uh, facilities are in top-notch condition. Um, of course, for every concession agreement anywhere in the world, the objective would be that you run um, whatever the service is that the government uh, has given to you to run on behalf of the government whilst you pay um, a concession fee or if, you know, some sort of remuneration goes back to the government. It could be a fee, it could be a share of profit, you know, depending on what um, service, specific service we're talking about. In this case, there were concession fees that were supposed to have been paid by these um, uh, concessionaires. Apparently, that has not been happening uh, from majority of these um, organizations. Um, and in spite of them failing to make these payments, it is now coming to light that um, their concessions are being renewed. So you, you then begin to wonder how exactly this is happening, what exactly is going on. If the fees are not being paid, then the objectives of the concession, the primary objective of the concession, or one of the primary objectives of the concession, is not being met. So how come you know, the concessions are being renewed? Uh, so there are a lot of questions uh, being raised or being asked um, around this. And if you look at the details of the concessionaires, you begin to realize that a lot of the people involved are, are either politicians directly or are people uh, with political um, connections or are persons of interest politically, you know, and then you begin to, to get some clarity as to what exactly is going on. Okay, so those, that means that they've just written off as bad debts all the concession fees that were supposed to be paid. 17 years is not a, is not a, a, a short space of time. 17 years concession fee would amount to a lot of money in a country that is looking for money left, right and center. Let's just have a conspiracy theory, if that is how you will call it. Let's just have a theory. Why do you think uh, this is actually happening? You say you begin to have clarity. In your own perspective, what is the clarity you're having? Why uh, they are being renewed, the terminal leases are being renewed without that debt being paid? Okay, so first of all, I think it would be, it would be very useful to uh, realize that the amount of money that we're talking about um, is in the hundreds of millions of dollars. Mm. Dollars, you know. Dollars. Yes. So that's that's a first that's a first thing to to, to recognize. Um, uh, the concession the concessionaires have agreed to pay um, renewal fees ranging from between one million dollars to five million dollars. Um, 
uh, when these agreements were executed, you know. And if you if you calculate, so for the information available is that um, fees between, depending on which, we have about 25 concessionaires involved in all of this, and the fees that we're talking about range between um, 100 million dollars to 143 million um, you know, dollars, everything totaling about $350 million, you know, is what is being owed currently. You know, so we're talking almost a quarter of a trillion naira in revenues being lost by the government, right? Um, again, like I said, if you then um, uh, juxtapose this financial information with the fact that we're talking about either politicians or uh, politically exposed people, um, you, you, you see that the only logical explanation um, for, for having these volumes of money being owed the government and yet concessions are being renewed is there's some sort of graft involved. There's some sort of graft involved. Um, um, either outright um, uh, kickbacks where the money that are supposed to go to the government is, you know, being pocketed by certain government officials, or um, some people are, are paid a certain amount to look the other way while government is owed. Um, so it's not it's not that these monies would not be paid. I don't believe that because these are agreements, they're legally binding contracts. We're talking about uh, transactions with private companies. Um, uh, one day, those debts will be paid. You know, when that one day will come, I, I really can't say. One would hope that um, with the coming of a new administration, maybe that would result in um, in, in uh, some progress uh, in this in this area. But we can only hope. We'll have to wait uh, to see how that plays out. Um, uh, however, uh, going into the politics of this, if you, if you recognize the fact that the last eight years have been um, um, under the presidency or the leadership of a man that was supposedly a man of integrity and um, a strong anti-corruption uh, crusader, um, and yet something like this happened, you know, under his watch, before his watch, but under, one would have thought that it would have been stopped under his watch. You then wonder if there, we have any logical basis to hope that this will stop now. But we would have to wait and see. All we can do is hope for the best. Of course, at the end of the day, it's the Nigerian people that are suffering. It's the Nigerian economy that is suffering. And you know, and I'm sorry to do this, but I I can't I can't help but tie this to the subsidy question. So if you if you uh, some of us have said repeatedly, and my position has always been that the subsidy is not the problem. And when people tie our fiscal uh, fiscal problems. You know, the fact that Nigeria is pretty much broke um, from a fiscal perspective. Um, when we tie that to subsidies, we deny the reality that stares us in the face. The reality that um, a significant chunk and portion of Nigeria's revenues do not even get reported. You know, does not arrive in the consolidated revenue account of the, of, of the country. Those monies never arrive. And this is a fantastic example of, of, of what somebody like me has been saying, you know, since this debate erupted. These revenues have been lost to the government. Um, and this is only one example. This scenarios like this are repeated across board, across all of the ministries and all of the agencies of government. If you are able to stop this, reclaim these revenues, in this instance, now we're talking about a quarter of a trillion naira, a quarter of a trillion. So if you stop this and then stop similar incidences across the different uh, ministries, agencies, parastatals, and all of that, then perhaps you would have enough revenues to provide the desperately needed subsidies that will ensure that consumption is not disrupted and that would potentially could lead to either a recession or a slowdown of economic growth. You know, so... Um, one would only hope that uh, the people that are in charge of running the affairs of the country and running the economy would um, brace up to the challenge at hand 
will stop the revenue leakages and save the country from continuing to bleed, you know, from all areas of, 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 of its um, economic, economic activities. Well, you, this hope is good to have hope, but uh, you see, the renewal of the lease is done by a, a new government, which you are, hope, you are hoping will sit up uh, to their responsibility and do what they need to do. Uh, do you, I don't know how we can well, marry those two things together. Well, well, I mean, I, I, I did, I did mention that, you know, I did allude to that, but, but I also understand that one of the conditions for the renewal of these leases um, was uh, that these outstanding debts would be paid, you know, by the concessionaires. One day. Um, and I, and I think yes, and I think it's also important to perhaps um, concede that um, changing port concessionaires. Um, is a painstaking process. It's, it's, not, it's, not, it's, not, it's not a walk in the park. Um, so to, I am not very sure that the option of terminating those contracts, for example, you know, based on the failure um, of these concessionaires to have made these payments over the years, would be, a, um, would be an immediate option. It's something that can happen. Maybe it's something that should happen, but it will take time. Okay, um, but so they, perhaps, are you not worried? Are you not worried that um, there should be a supervising ministry? There should be some heads that should be in charge of supervising, and nothing is being said about this. There's no probe to that effect. It's just that okay, let's renew this, and there is a condition of renewal. Uh, what about the people who are supposed to be in charge that did not do their work right, or may have, like you said? Uh, been receiving some of these kickbacks and letting it slide. Yeah, so so this whole concession thing falls directly under the purview of the Nigeria Port Authority, um, which obviously um, is supervised. You know, I, I think we have a, a blue a, a ministry of um, a, a blue economy right now. Uh, marine and blue marine economy, and blue economy yeah. you know, so that this would come under the purview of that ministry. Um, the minister has just settled in, or is just settling in. Uh, so, you know, you know, there is the political leadership and there's the bureaucracy. The bureaucracy that sits beneath the political leadership will continue to do what they've been doing, um, which would explain the renewal of the concessions, the concession agreements. If the agreements have come up and are due for renewal. They will get renewed regardless of whatever is happening at the political um, top, top of the ladder. Um, so one would hope, again, I use that word because there is nothing else that one can do, uh, one would hope that the new minister that is coming on board, um, would, this would be one of the things that um, he would take on his plate and um, look critically into, ensure that consequences happen for people that have been involved in what I think is a scam, um, um, and then clean it up and ensure it doesn't happen again. You know, so when we talk about the blue economy, absolutely and certainly the port is a, is a critical component of that. In fact, let's forget you know, the issue of the lost revenues from this particular um, uh, scandal, if you may. Um, the reality is that for you to talk about harnessing the potential, the tremendous potential in the blue economy, your ports are a critical component. And you, almost like a foundation, you have to fix your ports. They have to become efficient. Um, you can't have a situation where um, goods arrive in a country and three months later you still are unable to clear them. And this is still happening till today in spite of these private sector concessions. You know, so this has to be fixed. And one would believe that the new minister would look into this, fix the inefficiencies, and fix the corruption in the system so that Nigeria can benefit from it. Do you think there are specific policies that need to be formulated for this to work? seamlessly? Well, um, yeah, I mean, clearly the, 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 the policies currently exist, but I think that one of the things that um, perhaps we need to move towards is to take those policies and convert them to legislation. Uh, one of the reasons that, you know, um, this has happened or has been able to happen is that apparently there is no clear um, there is no clear, uh, what's it called? Sorry. There is no clear... Legislation? Legislation, yes, um, covering this. Um, there is no clarity. So if, for example, a concessionaire is found to have failed 
um, in their duty to make payments to government, if that is found to be um, some sort of corruption, what is the consequence? Um, I, in an ideal situation, of course, what you would have is that in the concession contract, um, there would be perhaps maybe the, 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 the risk of um, the concession being terminated, you know, for failure of uh, meeting the terms of the agreement and all of that. But beyond the termination, what consequence would the concessionaire um, um, have to face? That there is no clarity with regards to that. So I think that the new minister will need to look into all of this, um, integrate all of the existing uh, policies surrounding the different um, um, uh, uh, nodal points of the value chain in, in the marine sector and ensure that critical legislation is taken to the National Assembly to remove any ambiguity and any loopholes that uh, mischief makers might be uh, taking advantage of. Okay, Mr. Shockerton, thank you so much for your thoughts this morning on the program. We're, it has been a pleasure having you. Thanks for having me. Okay, we were talking with Mr. Shegun Shokbuton, a principal partner, Wood Regions Quartz Consulting, and uh, he's a public affairs analyst, and in that capacity, he was talking with us on the fact that the federal government has neglected the 17-year-old debt, concession debt, and is renewing uh, the leases right now. So he has put more light on that. We'll take a short break. When we return, we'll be on to our second hot topic, which is the fact that workers are threatening to withdraw from National Housing Fund over unremitted funds. Stay with us.